both such big crap spinners, aren't we? <laughs> just, just big crap spinners for sure. <laughs> I don't think I've heard that one. I, I don't think do. I've heard that phrase. Ah, uh, people used to say I was a bit of a crap spinner, like just like I can talk. I can the girl can totally talk. Totally a crap spinner. <laughs> Was that your attempt at an Aussie accent? Yeah, yeah I, sorry. I apologize. No, I kind of want to hear okay. it again. Let me ask you this. So when you say we ha we had a bit of a yarn, yeah. is, is it yarn like as in like sewing stuff or is it like a yawn? <laughs> <laughs> well, what was the alternate? A yawn? A yawn, you know, like we had a yawn. I don't, is it a yarn? You've never heard that. I mean, I've heard you say it. You have to pick me up on my Australianisms because sometimes something like that, like having a yarn, I did not realize is not global. <laughs> it might be. It might be, and I'm just not hip to it. No, but no, have no. A yarn, a yarn. Yarn might be more uh, coming from the UK now, from that side of things. Uh, having a yarn is just like a very long, I literally think it comes from like a ball of yarn and you pull the thread and it goes on and on. I think that's uh -huh. where it comes from. But yeah. you're talking about a chat. But like you literally, if if you're having a yarn with someone, it's generally like a very long, comfortable conversation. Like yeah. you could be around the campfire or you're like morning coffee at work and you're just having a yarn about what happened. You know, it, it tends to go on and on and on. So that's... Yeah. I, I I see you having lots of yarns. <laughs> Yawn. I have so many yarns. <laughs> I'm notorious for my monologues. You're a notorious yarner. I'm I don't want to say it like me, yarn, because that doesn't sound as yeah, yarn. Yeah, sounds fine. Sounds fine. Okay. With the hard R, we're good with the hard R? Yeah. I love a hard R. <laughs> <laughs> too much I'll have to mark it as explicit oh my gosh is someone there <laughs> yeah they're everywhere there's people everywhere I'm sorry family I'll keep it g-rated <laughs> <laughs> don't worry they're fine they're fine yeah <sighs> yeah no but I'm so glad this all worked out that we got her on Today. yes it was, it was like a bonus episode I think this will be five episodes this month is it I think so I think it by the time we get to the end of this month I think it'll be like five I'm so proud right now but also I can't help but feel that you're a little cheater because you have lined all these episodes up to keep me busy editing the <laughs> podcast so you can get ahead on your vision race this is a part of your evil ploy. Oh, your nails look nice. Oh, thank Yeah, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm doing this. Oopsies. They're glorious. It's like a blood red. Like a yes, it's like a matte. Like oh it's not shiny. So that's why it's like. I you know, live so. for it. You look like a vampire queen. Thank you. I'm in the mood. But yeah, yeah no, I am totally going to just keep stacking episodes on you. No. <laughs> You fish! I knew it! I knew it! <laughs> I knew hey, America! America's gotta win! Oh my goodness, you latched on to that mighty quick. <laughs> so did our <laughs> listeners, by the way. Everybody's like, hashtag Team America, hashtag Team Australia. I was just like, wow, like that happened really fast. <laughs> <laughs> I think both countries are equally competitive. And you know what? It just sparks that natural spirit of... Uh, Aussies and Americans we yeah. just we love a good a good battle it's so true where are you at how far do I have to catch up um <laughs> I I'm on like page 90 okay yeah. okay you're probably, you're probably close I'm close but I feel like I'm getting into the <laughs> parts where I'm gonna have to really slow down yeah yeah and really rethink some things but yeah. um so we'll see. Mm. But I do feel happy having like a skeleton of something to work off as opposed to writing from scratch. Totally. Like yeah. I feel like, especially that whole first half, I felt like, okay, this isn't as bad as I, as I thought. Um, but like, I know, like, it's not this blank page, you know, I've already got the story pretty much out there. 
so now I'm just like going back and diving in deeper and, you know, making sure all the characters are named the same name throughout the book because I can't, I see. <laughs> oh, relatable, relatable. <laughs> I seem to have changed the dad's name like a billion times. <laughs> okay I was talking about a typo this is hilarious <laughs> yeah. no like I swear each chapter he's named a different name and I so you know I love so. that though I don't know why I love that but it's just <laughs> just like picturing you in your writing zone and you're like here's daddy what's he today <laughs> That's a terrible what am I in the mood for today yeah, yeah. <laughs> is he Juan today or is he Miguel today I don't know uh, how about I, you how are you doing yeah I've been keeping busy with the pod because I really wanted to get Amparo's episode up even though I could have taken my time and and done them I was just kind of like oh, I want to get that episode up so yeah. that I'm just mentally free I'll take my time editing this one and I told her I'll get it up next week sometime but yeah you know like I don't put pressure on myself when we're busy with the pod because I'm like, this is all part of this process. You know what I mean? Like, and ultimately there's no real deadline for me at the moment. So I want to lean in. I, I said to my husband the other day, I was like, I literally just work on whatever feels the most important at the, in the moment. Yeah. Like this week that felt like the pod. So I've been mostly doing pod stuff and loving my life, you know, but yeah still getting a few chapters in here and there and I you know how I said the first draft I like I usually read it to my partner and like make sure he's up to date so the story makes sense but I didn't do it with the first draft this time we're just like his shifts were busy or whatever but I got him up to date this week with okay. this revision so that felt like an achievement yeah and he does think it's trash sure. so that's good <laughs> And then sometimes just speaking it out loud, you might even realize certain plot points or yes. diving a little deeper. I think that's good. To be honest, it's like a double revision. So I I revise it and then yeah. I read it in the chapter. And yes, verbally, I'll I'll be like, oh my gosh, like I've just and the annoying thing is when I read it in my own voice, I pick up different things to what I pick up with Legia, the the reader app. Have you yeah. noticed that? Oh yeah. If, oh yeah. Legia picks me up on typos I could have read over and anyone listening I really freaking highly recommend Angela changed my life with that app Legia it reads your manuscript back to you and it I'm not joking like it changed my writing life because mm -hmm. before if I had a day where I was feeling like a bit stimmied and just not the brain just wasn't operating the way I want and then you're like looking at words on the screen and you're not, you're not as sharp, but having it read to me on days like that is, it's a different, it's a whole different type of revision. Don't you yeah. find that? Oh, absolutely. And some things are just ridiculous that it picks up on, you know, like just completely wrong words or like, where was the comma? Um, so like all of those things I, I really love. But, right. but there is nothing that beats when you actually read it and like act it out. Yes. And, you know, but, but when you need that mental break, re-listening to it through those apps. 100%. Perfect. Yeah. And like I reading it aloud to my husband, it's like a whole different type of editing because he also picks me up on stuff that I miss. So it's getting the triple revision. So I hope you're ready for that. <laughs> Oh, shoot now I'm scared <laughs> but also like yeah what we said last time not putting too much weight to make it perfect this one revision so I'm also nervous about what I'm coming up to <laughs> but I feel good before I forget uh unrelated to that I got my copies of Courtney's uh, book yay. and I got the UK version tra -la, la anyway I bought two you can see one's up on my shelf there. I like Aww. to kind of put up whatever feels like the most important book. Yeah. Oh, that that's the there. designated spot that's is the spot. corner. I probably need to make it closer so it can be like a little bit of extra promo for her when we're on the. Yeah. <laughs> but no, um, I've bought two copies. I want to give one away on the pod, and I thought the way we can do this one. And by the way, listeners, you want this book. This is about mm -hmm. to be like a global sensation. Yes. And 
it is just one of my favorite books in the world, one of my favorite people in the world. And you may be lucky enough to win this copy now. And what I thought is the way the person can win is whoever is listening to this and slides into our DMs first, the Ooh. first person to hear this on the podcast and go to our at pub persuasion on Instagram and DM us and tell us you've heard about this giveaway on the podcast. The first person wins and I'll ship it anywhere in the world. So. Wow. That's good. Yeah. I thought of it. <laughs> I'm glad you, because when I thought of it, I was like, oh, that's it. Cause I was like, oh, how am I going to keep the giveaways fresh? You know, like, what do I want to, cause you had a really cool idea last time and I loved it. And you were like, I'd oh, follow what did you do? It was really cool. You're like, follow, be following the accounts or whatever. Yeah. Then, I just did what I I saw other people do. Yeah. I and, love that. But yours is, yours is completely fresh. So I like fresh. that. I'll, so take that. I'll take that for team Australia. <laughs> well, you know, it wasn't that different. Mm. I mean, it was like, okay, but <laughs> I love it just felt like an exciting way because I also feel like it's a reward for whoever our faithful listeners are who are tuning yeah. in like I love that. straight away. And and sometimes I like with Amparo's app, I had dropped the episode and that's why it's important to subscribe, my friends, because sometimes uh, it's it's a lengthy process getting it up everywhere. So sometimes <laughs> getting it up everywhere. I literally have the <laughs> of a 14 year old boy. Explicit <laughs> episode. <laughs> It takes a while to putting it in all the places. <laughs> anyway, it takes me a while. So sometimes, what? <laughs> what? Sometimes I put it up. <laughs> it's, it's too far gone now, isn't it? <laughs> okay, new word choice. Sometimes I load it. <laughs> it was worse. Way worse. It was way worse. <laughs> but you, you, you. Sometimes <laughs> it just goes places. Sometimes it goes to anchor and Spotify and YouTube hours before I post about it on the oh, social, on yeah. social media, just because. If, if it's taken me hours and then I take a break. Yeah. So sometimes I'll notice on Anchor, it's already got, uh, like Anchor tells me where it's coming from all the places. Sometimes I'll notice it's already got 11 views and I'm like, those are the dedicated, they've subscribed. <laughs> and yeah. did you know I saw on Spotify, we've got 10 five-star ratings. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And we didn't even ask for this. Yeah. Now all our listeners know you need to go read us. Yes. <laughs> That's just, amazing. I, my heart just melted because I was like, we didn't ask for this. And 10 people have gone and given us five stars. I don't know who they are, but thank you. It was my mom. It was my mom, your mom. No. My mom, no. Doesn't, my mom doesn't use my mom does not know how to use Spotify. So <laughs> Oh, it's just nice but yeah so little giveaway there and yeah I oh my know. gosh that's so cool yeah so giveaway first person sliding into the dms yes and saying hey i'm ready for you are you guys leaving okay <laughs> can, you, can you bring me back something? Hi, say hi. Emily. Oh. alicia wants to say hi oh my gosh <laughs> hi Hi. <laughs> oh my goodness i was okay. thinking of you i was thinking Wait, of you there, because... there, 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 no you don't need the dog <laughs> <laughs> i was actually thinking of you because tobias has his book launch tonight at ballarat and i know you loved his book i don't think i'm going to be able to make it to the book launch but i'm probably going to drive up and go get signed copies of the book if you want me to get one i'll send it to you what one because <laughs> ah, I know you love his book and I'll just buy two and I'll send one to you it'll be your book mail instead of Angela's thank you <laughs> no my pleasure nice right, get out of here she's getting free stuff and now I'm good <laughs> yes no I was thinking of that I forgot about that it so nice. I, I wanted to send her that because I know she loved the other copy 
Yeah, she is a Tobias mega fan. Maybe even more than me at this point. Well, she very loved good. his book. So, yeah. well, you just made her night. She just Aww, left. Her she's so yeah. cutie. She is cute. She's very cute. She's a good child. And now she's like a reader, which she never really was. But like she's been like, um, honestly, um, Tobias's book, Anything But Fine, I think really triggered her like love of books. So I got a little shiver. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> you know, it's so special because I'm like, what What have you been doing? Where? Why have you been in your room all day? She's like, oh, I just finished this book. And I'm like, yes. So that actually means something to her if I send her a signed copy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because she loves Tobias. She thinks he's just the coolest guy in town. Um, uh, we should probably read Cheryl's bio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're sidetracked today. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, I'll let you go ahead and read this. Yeah. So, the wonderful Cheryl. Cheryl Eng is a Woi Warung, Melbourne-based digital illustrator. She designed and illustrated for SAS companies before releasing her first author-illustrated picture book, Our Little Inventor. Here it is right here. An absolute masterpiece through Ellen and Unwin, 2019. Her work includes middle grade book covers for The Twelve by Cindy Lynn, The Rogues by Leanne Tanner, and Winnie, and Winnie Zhang Unleashes, A Legend by Katie Zhao. Our Little Invent has been adapted into a children's opera composed by Emma Jayakuma and presented by the West Australian Opera, which will premiere October this year, October 2022. For any book project inquiries, please contact her agent, Danielle Binks at Jacinta DeMace. So, yeah. Amazing. Man, it, we are lucky to have such a talented, like, talented guest and a guest lineup and... When I say her artwork, it's like top notch, masterful, masterpiece, beautiful. I'm just going to keep naming things. Gorgeous, stunning, glorious. I, what I, there's no other words. I am an author and I cannot produce the right words to, to say how beautiful her artwork is. It's powerful. Her artwork is powerfully immersive. Oh, that's a much better description <laughs> what I said. Yes, it's powerfully immersive. There's pages like this one that don't have any words on it and it doesn't need it because mm. what's happening in, in, the, in the pictures is telling the story. And honestly, sometimes it's my favorite thing about picture books when they just let the art tell the story and you feel almost more out of that than sometimes reading the text. And I feel, I guess that's why they do it in those instances. But yeah, Cheryl is just a freaking champion. And I literally felt like we had on like a celebrity artist because she is, in my opinion, she is. And everybody needs to buy that book for their loved ones, for their children and for yourselves because it's one of those, you know, Sean Tan, I collect his stuff as well. It's one know. of those, um, he's another Aussie. It's one of those art picture books. Like it's just, it's got a whole mood of its own. He's like quite famous for his stuff. Whoops. Yeah. As you do. <laughs> There's crap falling out of there. Let's yeah. just ignore that. But no, it's that kind of thing, like a collectible that yeah. any age can appreciate the beauty of us. So so excited that we got her on this week and yeah can't wait for everybody to hear more and hear more about her process which I think we both found so fascinating oh yeah I had no idea how the illustrator author side of things works and yeah. so it was really really interesting to hear uh, her take on things and excited for everybody to hear this episode yeah Let's get her on. Uh, hi! hi. Hello. Hi. Oh, your background is amazing. Oh, thank you. Uh, do you recognize it by any chance? Oh, my goodness. It's, I, uh, yeah, it's Kiki's delivery service. I was no. like, it was <laughs> triggering me, but I, the, wood, the wooden, but um, I don't remember it when it was messy like that, but I adore it. Oh, like, oh, yeah. Pieces. It's that little cabin in the woods where she uh takes that time off yes yeah so it's like, this is where that. I wish I was 
Oh my gosh, it's perfect. Do you know what? I thought it was because it wasn't, the screen wasn't on you straight away. It was on Angela. Yes. So I thought it was your room. And I was like, of course, it's so arty <laughs> and fabulous. <laughs> well, no, welcome, we'll to the show. welcome to the Thank show. You. And may I introduce you to my beautiful co host, the Angela Montoya. And Lovely to I bow to you. I bow to you because Melanie <laughs> showed me of your book and oh, and your artwork and I yes that one <laughs> dun, 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 dun. I was in awe I I have to bow because oh gorgeous <laughs> <laughs> that, that's quite the compliment thank you <laughs> I knew I knew as soon as I showed Angela because it's it's this thing like when we started the podcast almost a year ago now I kind of had these people that I'd met in person like yourself and Katya comes to mind as well I was like they're gonna be the first people I ask they're the only people I know <laughs> and I love that well that's a lie not the only people I know the only people I loved enough to want to talk for an hour yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just time gets away from you and you know throw in a pandemic in the mix and the other day I was literally sat there and I was like I saw a post I think about our little inventor going to stage in WA. I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't ordered my copy and it is time. So I'm just so glad that it, it went from ordering my copy finally, which I'm sorry it took me so long to it arriving to me being like, want to come on the show? And then we happen to have a space free. So here we are. <laughs> yes. I love that it was that spontaneous and that it just worked out nicely. It's perfect timing as well. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot happening this month. <laughs> yes, there is. And as I saw it, you just had a new book come out that you illustrated this week. I did. Yes. Uh, so I do have it here. Yes, just please. Oh, if it shows up. Yes, yeah. it does. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> so it's called um, Be Careful, Xiaoxing, and it's written by Alice Pong. Um, and yeah, it's it's essentially a story about helicopter parenting. And you see it from both sides of the family. It's also um, uh, a family of Asian descent. So it's like very close to home in that sense. But yeah, I'm really happy it's out because we've been working on it for like a little over two years now. Wow. Um, wow. And it's like, yes, oh, the, the world can see it now. <laughs> yes. It's like letting well, your child run off into the playground. <laughs> oh, I bet. I can only yeah. imagine. We'll have to get into all of that because I'm so curious how picture books work because it's not like the world I live in but let's get into more a little bit about you and your backstory was illustrating books always a dream of yours uh no unfortunately not <laughs> it was supposed to be my retirement job <laughs> so I got to it a little early uh but it's been fantastic and like the the uh, dream as a kid was to have some sort of art career so I, I think that's a tick off the list which is nice um but yeah it, I mean I think it was just a dream at the back of my mind never really thought it would happen um and I've had a lot of support along the way to get here so it's very grateful for that yeah well can you tell us a little bit about your journey to here where did it kind of where did it start that you began to yeah come into the bookish world oh okay so um I created uh like this little project I guess this is also the beginnings of Little Inventor so I wanted to self-publish this book and so I made up a story as quickly as I could I suppose <laughs> but it was based on a character that I already had and then I started showing it around to people um, I showed it to my sister who was current, uh, who was at the time studying um, publishing and editing at RMIT. Yeah. And so she was like my foot in the door. It somehow made its way to Alan and Unwin. Um, and then it was a very strange way to go about it. I hear stories about people who have so much trouble getting their work in front of publishers. So mm -hmm. it's like, I always keep that in mind that it was an odd way to go about it. Mm -hmm. um, but it was nice to have this complete, almost complete storyboard to be able to show them and say, this is a story that I just stuffed with things that I really enjoy. 
people care about yeah um please read it yeah. and these are the illustrations that I do it's like I hope it's good <laughs> it's well, great it was, yeah and and can you tell us a little bit about um your book and the story yeah um so at the time I was sort of getting into the whole feminist movement I think that's when it was really ramping up at like mid 2010s and uh also having stories about um young POCs or just POC characters in general so it's like yeah why not let's change this character who was originally a boy into a girl um put her in traditional clothing it's like why not and it it visually it looks cool but also it was just really nice to see that character um as is uh the other thing I was learning was like setting goals having persistence in your career and so I added that in too Mm -hmm. um I was working in tech industries at the time or SaaS companies as they call themselves and that also sparked the idea for her to be an inventor or an engineer of sorts so again it's like just life things that were happening and coming all into this one story and yeah I mean (laughs) the environment has always been something that's worried of me a lot so that as well and that message the the way you did it and I just every there's almost like you've you've made it your own but there's this ghibli-ish feel to it Ghibli yes. meets Cheryl and like <laughs> is just everything and just the way she's like got this almost you just want to pick her up and hug her you know this kind of scrappy adorable feeling of just <laughs> like something that I yeah like when I saw the actual images in the book as I went through it I got chills because it it the reason I compare it to Ghibli is because it has that feeling of like this is a real character. Do you know what I mean? Like I, yes. they've come to life on the page and the way you captured that message in a, like a digestible way for kids growing up, it was just so beautiful. And just, I just love the little inventor. <laughs> I love her so much. I think I need to buy a second page, second one so I can have the art on my wall because it's so beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yeah, uh, she... I needed people to root for her. Yeah. Um, I wasn't sure whether I'd succeeded in that because um, everyone's different, right, in who their heroes are. Mm. Um, She was mine. And so that resonated with a few people. So that's that's awesome. (laughs) Yeah. I I kid you not, I could almost hear your pictures. I don't know if it makes (laughs) sense, but you know, you like, you feel like, the world is actually happening yes. around you. And I'm just looking at it from a little screen. I don't actually have the book, but I could, I feel like I could hear it. And <laughs> I, I don't know, that might sound like the weirdest thing, but it really did feel so realistic and lived in. Um, like it felt like something I'd be watching on Netflix, like um, mm-hmm. Arcane or, or something, you know, like it just yeah. felt real. Yeah. Um, so like, again, I bow down because- <laughs> I can only do stick figures. And so <laughs> to see you be able to build an entire world with your fingers is hmm. amazing. <laughs> how, how long did it take you to, to finish the project? Oh, so from conception, I think it was three and a bit years. I had about two years to work on the book. Uh, and then there was like this weird, scramble in the last three months to get it done <laughs> so that was uh that was me procrastinating but it, it got done in the end um so yeah it was like the the whole process feels really long and I'd been with her with Nell for quite a while and I, and I then I understood how authors were like my characters are real yeah like I know how they feel about certain things and I was like oh that's silly yeah. um <laughs> and then you do it yourself it's like oh okay I know what they mean um, so yeah, it takes me about, I, I want to say a week, like five ish, four days to complete a spread, mm. but that's spread over however many months just to get that one page done. 
Wow. Is the spread the two pages side by side? Two pages, yeah. And then if it's like one scene on one page, one on another, I also consider that two separate illustrations. Gotcha. This and is what, so fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I wanted to ask, which I know it's further down the questions list, but we're kind of here now. <laughs> what <laughs> mediums do you use to get it from start to in a book? Yes. Uh, so I work 100% digitally. I'm hoping that might change in the future. But uh, for this book, I worked primarily in Photoshop. So sketches, uh, storyboard, and then painting was all done in that. I, I have a Wacom Cintiq, which I've had for a while. Uh, it's quite a large one as well. So I could like so, uh, step back and take a look at the images in the same way that an artist would with a canvas. Gotcha. Um, so it's a hefty tool to have. I rely on it very much. I've already done three books on it. So that's, I'm, I'm very glad I, I have. <laughs> and then um, I'm starting to move into uh, Clip Studio Paint, which is uh specifically for painting and for manga comics um so I kind of like the way that one organizes your pages a little better but yeah almost everything I do is digital again hoping I can move into traditional mediums when I have the time yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> finding the time is key I yeah. want to ask so when you have an editor or because I, I honestly don't know the process but I'm assuming you have an editor, right? That's critiquing your work. So do they yes. do they say, okay, this page isn't really working. You need to go back. How how is that process like? Oh, it's uh, it's hard when you get the page to like a semi semi final uh, stage, and then they ask you, can you move this person here or make space over there ideally that sort of edit happens in the storyboard bit where it's just like black and white sketches um easy to move around I have had feedback where it's like basically final and then we start refining it shifting characters around that's where the digital side of it is super helpful because if you're editing a traditional painting you either repaint the whole thing or it has to be a mixture of you scan it in, edit it in um, Photoshop or whichever software. And then it's like a mishmash. You don't have the original painting, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, it's Cause they would be like, can you move this face? Cause we want the font here or whatever. Yeah. And you're yeah. like, if it's on our original painting, you're like, well, <laughs> just move the face. Oh gosh. I, I, I think there's a lot more planning when you do traditional like I've been looking at Elise Hurst's work lately and I'm like oh my gosh I don't know how you do that um but yeah more planning than I ever do for a digital <laughs> that's amazing and what's the process like when it's you and another writer is there a lot of collaboration beforehand or you know, are they telling you what they're wanting? How, mm. how does this work as well? I'm so curious <laughs> about everything you do. <laughs> oh, these are good questions because I didn't know a lot of this previously as well. I just sort of like fell into it and I was making my way through it. Um, but traditionally, you're not supposed to uh, have any contact with the author. Really? Uh, at least, yeah, that's what happened with the first two uh, other books that I did that were written by someone else. Um, so the publisher usually contacts you to say, would you like to take part in this picture book? And then you start the storyboarding process. Uh, there's hardly any feedback from the author, if any at all. And I think the editors and publishers do that to sort of protect you as well, because otherwise there's back and forth. Mm -hmm. Depending on the author, it could be a nightmare. <laughs> gotcha. Um, yeah. <laughs> You could and, get like um, a kind of micromanager type author oh, who's just like, no, I want the expression more like this. Yeah. And like the hair's the wrong color. <laughs> like, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes I did wonder, it's like I was trying to cater to the author originally. And then I realized the publisher contacted me. So it's like, mm. do it my way and then see what the feedback is after that. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
And then afterwards you can contact the author and say hi. <laughs> yeah. Do you like it? Are you happy? Yeah. Otherwise. Yeah. You can't like uh, you wait, you can't say no anymore. It's like it's there. <laughs> yeah. That's the best time to contact them after it's already exactly. done. We're, we're done. You're gonna like it no matter what. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and I guess if they're contacting you, they love your style, you know? And so yes. it's hopefully whatever you, and I know when I got my big sleeve tattoo and I went in and I was just kind of like, didn't care what he did in a way, mm -hmm. because I picked that artist very mm -hmm. carefully. And I was like, whatever you do on my body, it's going to be, I had some ideas, you know, but ultimately I, I wasn't concerned because I'd seen all his work. I was like, whatever you put, I'm going to be happy. Like, I know. <laughs> That's your dream client most of the time. <laughs> it's like, yeah, please just come to me because you like my mm -hmm. work and I will do the best that I can for you. Um, you don't want someone to come in. I think the analogy that someone used was that an artist is a crayon and then the fist is the, the client and then they're just drawing with it, <laughs> oh. which... Yeah, that, that one's a bit um a bit crude, but it sometimes that's how that's what happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I make sense. I mean, we're we're in the process right now for my book of working on the cover. Mm. And I wanted like no part in it because <laughs> I mean, like I had ideas of what I thought would be great and, and the characters, what they look like in my head. But other than that, I have no creative bone in my body. So <laughs> I just wanted to be able to trust somebody, you know, and it sounds like, you know, maybe I'm a great client because <laughs> I did not. Well, you're a great co-host, but I have to rebut that you don't have a creative bone in your body. You literally create worlds <laughs> and people out of thin air. It's just in the stories it's in the stories instead of like a physical, I mean, I'm still hanging out to see Angela Montoya stick figure art, by the way. Yeah. I, I still want that in my life. Yeah. Well, I'm, I need some lessons from you, Shira. <laughs> yeah. Always happy to help. Well, good. I'm going to take you up on that. <laughs> so what has been the most rewarding uh, part of all of this for you? I was surprised at um, what it was like to have kids approve of the book. Uh, I think I thought about everything else except for that. Things like approval from publishers, approval of my artist peers, um, even just the fact that I was like, yes, this can be in my portfolio. I did not realize, considering this is a children's picture book, that the reward would come from having kids read the book and being told my child reads it every night. It's like that. Yeah. That's straight to the heart. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And every now and then I still get comments like that. I'm like, you're still reading the book. I'm sorry, but I'm just, I'm really happy to hear that. <laughs> I'm not surprised because I remember I like, you know, you have those random childhood memories and there was like, a handful of picture books that even when I was much older, I would just stare at the pages for ages. Yeah. And I think once that, once you make that hook and you're mentally in that world, you kind of want to revisit it and you can by just staring at the, and kids are really a lot of kids are like the great pictures, the great creatives, you know? So if they feel immersed in that world, of course they want to go back and dive in into the magic of it all, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And there's something special about picture books in particular. Yes. Um, you know, I when my kids were little, we'd have certain ones that they really clung to. Mm. And I still have them. And I can, you know, it's like one of those things I can imagine them when they're older, remembering the book and like, ah, oh, I'm going to read that to mine. You know, so there's something so special and pure about picture books, in particular, the drawings. And, yeah. and and also to see yourself in them is yeah. so valuable and so special and something it feels like more recently has begun to happen, which I just adore. And so, yeah. you know, it, you're, you're touching lives and it's <laughs> a beautiful thing. That's also very scary, but it's like, you would hope that you've written something that would help kids become better and kinder people as well. And that, 
that ended up being the goal. It's like originally it was purely just a visual goal. Let's create a pretty picture book. But now it's like, all right, I hope you learn to be kinder, uh, to be helpful um, and be ambitious. I Those were the chill. things that sort of came out from that. Yeah. I got a chill because, yeah. yeah, like growing up, I was very lucky to have people who were just like, you know, and I remember reading, it kind of sticks in my head, this saying, as good as any man that I read in Narnia. So I grew up as like a very powerful woman. But as I've gotten older, I've become increasingly aware that that is not the story for everyone, you know, that they weren't necessarily encouraged to just be the inventor, to be the, you know, wear the pants. (laughs) (laughs) Is that a politically incorrect thing to say? I don't know. You know what I mean? Like allow yourself to like play with whatever tickles your fancy whatever you feel excited about and and yeah I feel like that was something so beautiful in your book and so important just to see it in a natural way that that it just is because that's how I was brought up that it was just there wasn't even uh there was no I was as good as any of the boys in my class as far as I was Mm. concerned and it's because of books like this you know and and that's the power behind it that you know, when it comes into touch with a child who maybe hasn't grown up with those influences that they're like, I can do this because mm-hmm. my my little inventor does it, you know, and <laughs> that's the true power of books, you know, like it's, yeah, incredible. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's a reason why she's also so small. It's because I, as a kid, it's like everyone's huge. And if you're a small kid, even more so, um <laughs> yeah. but it's like you can be small you can still make an impact um don't be discouraged too easily give it a break and then try again mm. yeah I love it. well let's continue on with this book our little inventor it's been adapted for stage for yes. production this October yeah congratulations that's <laughs> amazing you. that is huge that's crazy Uh, (laughs) can you tell us about that how did this come to be oh gosh it's one of those uh I guess serendipitous things again uh so Emma Jaya Kumar is um based in Western Australia and I got an email from her saying we're thinking about adapting your book into a children's opera and I was like oh okay this is going to be like a small production (laughs) but no it's actually like the West Australian opera um, is commissioning a whole new opera um, to be written and Emma's story was that she walked into a bookstore and then my book was on the stand but upside down and so she picked it up because it looks like her niece and then she read through it loved the story and then got in contact and <laughs> It's such a good story as well. I'm like, <laughs> I hope we get to tell this to, to more people as well. Um, and, and I love it. I love the fact that she saw her niece in it. I love that she showed it to her niece and then she also was like, yes, that looks like me. Um, and then we spent uh, the better part of, I think it was the second year of lockdown working on the libretto so the story is a little bit different we just had to make a few changes um but it's beautiful and it's like it's a month left going to premiere in October it's exciting are they going to come to Melbourne I really want them to come to Melbourne oh gosh I so hope so um I've been like trying to suss out who to talk to about that yes come on let's make it happen (laughs) I'm like, instead in Melbourne, surely you would bring it here. Um, So I'll do some like sneaky networking and see what we can do. (laughs) Yes. I am so ready for that to happen. Are you going to get to see the one in WA? Yeah, I'm going to fly over at the end of the month. So it's like, got to be there. (laughs) That is the coolest thing ever. (laughs) That's cool. (laughs) Yes. It, it's still so unbelievable it's like oh, I was so expecting this book to make like a quiet exit gracefully just disappear and then it's like it's revived itself you know what? I remember somebody said to me once publishing a book is like telling a joke 
and waiting to find out if it's funny a year later. And it's always stuck with me because it's it's something I see. Good, even the very best books, even the very best writers, it can take so long to break through. It can take so long to get going. But what I find is that the really powerful, like heartfelt stories, they hook into people. And and it might be a year or two before your friend from Ellen and Unwin meet <laughs> finally buys your book and asks you on her podcast. <laughs> But she doesn't forget you and she doesn't forget your art because it is powerful. But that it is the kind of winding nature of our industry because it's so, it yeah, it's like, a, it's a slow burn, right? <laughs> slow burn <Yeah>. industry. <laughs> oh, gosh, it is slow. Like, everything is so much slower. Um, I was coming from, like I said, the tech industry where everything was reasonably fast. Mm-hmm. Um but also uh, originally my aim was to work in animation where everything is just like lightning fast. Even though it takes five years to do a movie, you, you've got deadlines and all that. And this one is just like the reward comes when you least expect it. Mm. Yeah. I love that so much. I love <laughs> it. And you just never know who's going to pick it up and what's exactly. going to come of it. And that is so beautiful. <laughs> Oh, I'm excited for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> like that is, that is the dream. That's beyond the dream, right? It's something you probably yes. don't like think of is a dream until it happens. You're like, I dreamed of this. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> and, or, this is like one random because I used to write for a performing arts company in New Zealand and uh-huh. like the feeling of sitting in an audience while hundreds of kids like sing out the lines you've written and like I was an anxious mess I was like so but it's like it's gonna move you in ways you don't expect to see Mm -hmm. on stage I think because seeing someone interpret your work it's just wild it's so wild I'm so excited Mm -hmm. for you (laughs) when is it again I'm like how much are flights to WA (laughs) yeah uh it's so premiere night is the first of october so it's running i think four shows first of october second of october two performances a day and then it's meant to tour around to the schools because they adapted it in such a way that they only needed five cast members yeah and then uh there's a piano score to go with it so i've seen the piano version and emma herself is a soprano so she sang the full opera Wow. on her own and I was like that that's all I need <laughs> she's freaking amazing yeah but yeah I have no idea what to expect when I go see it in person um I'm trying not to expect too much too much too little so it's like yeah. we'll, we'll wait and see yeah <laughs> that's the best way to go into things just yeah. like feel it out as yeah. it happens naturally yeah Go in low expectations. Yes. Let whatever happens happen. <laughs> it'll be all good after that because anything will be great. Exactly. If you go low. <laughs> yes. That's my rule in life. I go low and then good things happen. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I learned that in high school. So it's just been like. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think high school is pretty much where you learn those kind of lessons, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and if it's, I don't even know if it's go low, but yeah, I'm definitely learning like having no expectations, mm-hmm. such a powerful way to exist because it's like, like I know the other day, even just with life, like we went to this cafe and it was shit. Like it was really <laughs> shit. But like, I had no expectations. I was like, I'm still in the moment with my husband enjoying the mm-hmm. sun streaming in. Yes, the coffee has like the road stop coffee debt kind of taste, but I'm going to enjoy it for what it is <laughs> at this moment. Whereas if you go into it and you're like, I read this was on broadsheet, it's going to be the best. And then it's not you're like, you wind up making yourself miserable, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think it's a great way to exist and to just kind of be open to what's what the universe is going to throw at you absolutely and then you'll have like those little surprises every now and again and it, it helps your day go by as well it's like oh I wasn't expecting that yeah or, that was a surprise <laughs> yes I'm loving I've I've been hearing that a little bit more like lately just like these little things these little moments especially in publishing that takes forever mm. these little things that do surprise you and just bless your day 
um, are the things you have to cling to because, because what else do we have? (laughs) (laughs) Always the small things in life. (laughs) Yes, it is. It's the small things and they just keep on building. And, Mm. and then before you know it, you're standing in an opera house. So yeah. Yeah. But looking back back at all um, the accomplishes that you've had, what advice would you give a younger version of yourself before you started this journey? Um, Probably uh, try not to worry too much about what other people expect your art to be. Mm -hmm. Um, I spent a lot of time, still sometimes spend, spend a lot of time chasing what other artists have done. So there was no voice to to what I was doing. Um, and to overcome that is quite hard, especially later on when, like right now, I'm quite cautious about everything I do. Mm. Um, it's like I don't tweet as often as I used to <laughs> as well. Um, and it's, it's less carefree. It's more a business nowadays. So I wish I'd done a, a little bit more experimenting as an artist earlier. I also wish I'd taken up... Um, the sort of illustration career a bit sooner because I dive I, I'd gone right into the whole web design thing pretty early on and that was like my practical side coming out um but at the same time it's like I kind of like that I took the time to get to this point so a little more art freedom for young artists I think is a good way to go especially when you don't have clients mm. Yeah. 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 You're a little more free to just roam and explore yourself. Exactly. Yeah. I feel like it's always hard looking back because there's things, you know, you could have done to make your journey easier, but at the same time, it's like the journey that you went on the wild twisting journey is like why you are where you are now. Mm. So it's always kind yeah. of a double-edged sort of like knowing the hindsight that you could have done things differently, but also I'm learning to kind of appreciate even the, yeah, the stumbles and, and the stop signs and the turnaround, the U-turn signs that like all of them have uh, kind of guiding us to where we're meant to be or something like that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, what's next for you, my lovely friend? Oh gosh, there's a, So a couple of things book-wise, I'm still working with Alice on a couple of other projects. So we have a graphic novel that's supposed to be out in two years. So that'll be taking up most of my time. Yeah. Uh, And another um, middle grade series, which hasn't officially been announced yet. So uh, keep an eye out for that one. And besides that... I'm still freelancing, <laughs> so I'm not wholly just uh, a book illustrator just yet. Oh, good um, to know. Actually, that was yeah. one of the questions. Are you open to commissions from the public? Uh, I very rarely do. Um, I have like a set uh, set of clients uh, who I work with regularly, and usually that takes up quite a bit of my time anyway. If people approach me, I am in this position where I can say no to projects now. So it's like, if I feel passionate about it, Mm. I will definitely work with you. And I prioritize working with good people as well. Um, I think that's the other advice that I have for any young illustrators, designers. It's like, don't take on the dodgy clients. (laughs) It is not worth it. And especially now when you can give yourself exposure through social media. So, Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it does seem that social media is such a great platform for artists in particular. I mean, you know, you see, I I like just scrolling through through <laughs> artists like feeds. I know it's weird, but I just it's just it's art right there on your phone, mm. and you get to be exposed to all these different types of you know artists and so um do you feel like for you social media is has been played a key role for your career uh it's it's been good in terms of like who I can discover not necessarily for uh, my own exposure mm-hmm. um but it, it's been such a key player since high school it's like uh communicating 
getting inspiration. Um, it's a little bit harder now for sure. Um, but hopefully things will get a little bit better. <laughs> mm. Be persistent again. Yeah. Um, and then just do your own thing and it, it should pay off in the end. Yes. I think that's so <laughs> powerful. And it and that it it literally ties back into what we always say, which is finding your right community because there are people who who you it's so much work this industry and you need those people who are going to lift and elevate and support and so I think that's such good advice to like be cautious of what you take on like who you want to yeah. work with and that kind of stuff but I see yeah, our time has true. like vanished <laughs> uh, it's gone time flies magic <laughs> it's evaporated i'm so so happy we got you on today and I'm glad to be here made my day and yeah we're gonna have to have you on again when there's other projects cooking away so we can cheer about it together and <laughs> thank you so much oh thank you for having me this was great <laughs> it was thank you i appreciate you coming on because i learned a lot today <laughs> oh i'm glad <laughs> yeah me too well it before it cuts us off have a wonderful day. I am sure I will see you sometime in the near future now that we're not locked so. down in our houses. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs>